Welcome back. This micro lecture is on momentum and inelastic collisions. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, so one to two sentence summary, and your follow-up questions on Google Forms. Now, if elastic or bouncing collisions didn't make sense, I'd suggest you go back and rewatch that before watching this one, because I'm going to move a little bit faster. Okay, quick review. Elastic are bouncing collisions. So an ideal or perfectly elastic collision is one where you drop a ball and it bounces up just as high as you started it with, um, assuming you're dropping it, not throwing it down. Inelastic collisions are the exact opposite. You drop a ball and it doesn't bounce at all. It'd be kind of boring for a bouncy ball. Now in reality, most of the time we get things that are in between. So they're not elastic, they're not inelastic, they're somewhere in between. Um, so we usually say perfectly elastic or perfectly inelastic if we want to represent these ideal scenarios, uh, but real world is kind of in between each of them. Okay, so we're going to try and model what uh, momentum would look like or conservational momentum would look like uh, in inelastic collisions. So we've got two carts here. One is moving, one is sitting still. And as car A rolls towards car B, it hits it and it locks together and they move together afterwards. So the way I like to set up these uh, conservational momentum equations is since momentum before equals momentum after, I really just need to add up all the momentum of stuff before and then add up all the momentum of stuff after and set those two things equal to each other. So regardless of how many things are involved, that's all you have to do. So in this case, we have two things before, so that means I have two momentum terms before. After, since they're connected, we only have one thing. It's bigger, so I need to account for that, but it's one thing after, so we just get one term for the momentum after. Now, if you remember, we used beginning velocity as u and final velocity as v. So if I break this down into all of its components, momentum before is ma and ua, and uh, for b it's mb and ub. So if you add those together, it's just these two terms added together. And then after, since there's only one thing, we just have the momentum of um, that together. Now, to figure out its new mass, it's simply just the mass of those two things before. Um, added together, and then their speed as they are together. And that'll be our total momentum after. More formally, what it looks like is this. You add two things together before, because we have two things that hit each other, so the total momentum, you have to look at them both. And then after, you just look at their momentum together afterwards, meaning like them stuck together. So they're going to have the same velocity, etc. And their mass will be, um, their mass is added. So you break that apart, and you get their momentum before, and then you get their combined mass times their uh, velocity for after. If instead we had three things colliding, so imagine th th three carts colliding into each other and sticking, um, that would be simple. Again, we had three things before, so you'd add the three momentum up, and then after there's only one thing, so you just have one momentum term after. But to figure out the mass for this term, you'd have to add those three things together. So what it would look like is this. You add the three things together before, and then you have the masses um, combined after times their final um, velocity all together. Now we don't need additional velocity terms because it's just one big ol' honkin' object that's moving after. So this might be a bullet that gets lodged in a block, two cars that connect together and kind of stick together, a football player tackling somebody, um, but not in kind of a collision that bounces, but one where he wraps his arms around him and so they kind of stick together. Um, those are all situations where we might use this sort of thing. Now really, it's just the same idea as before. It's just you're combining the masses after. So rather than memorizing each of these as kind of separate uh, equations, I like to just think of it, like I said, where what you really do is count up how many objects do you have before the collision, how many objects do you have after the collision, and then you make one momentum term for each of them. So that is my suggestion. We'll practice that in class with you guys. That's it for this one. Two or more bullet, three or more bullet points worth of notes. So one to two sentence summary and your follow-up questions on Google Forms.